Hello, everyone. I think everyone is starting to come in little by little. Yep, here we go. Wow. There's a lot of you guys. Well, my name's Patrice Miles. Welcome, guys, to the masterclass Stop Gambling with Your Employees. So I am sure people will continue to come into the room. And as they do, um, we will just continue with our session. But I just want to start off and thank you guys for taking time out of your day to step away from your business. Um, you guys cannot get this hour back. So let's be intentional with your time. And if you guys don't mind, go ahead and turn off any cell phones that you have. Um, anything that you feel like might distract you from this next hour that we're going to spend together. Um, don't worry, all of those people um, that are out there that need you, they are still going to be there in the next hour. So turn off your cell phones, close your office door, turn off your emails, anything that's going to limit uh, the distractions that are going to come your way. Because if you guys remember, your time is valuable and you, of course, can control how you spend that. So also, if you guys will mute yourself so that way we don't hear your background noises, that would be fantastic. Uh, before we get started, I do want to hear from you all um, quickly. If you don't mind typing in the chat window um, and just let us know uh, your name, uh, what the name of your business is and where you are located. That would be great. And for some reason, I can't see our chat. Brent, can you see the chat? Maybe not. Well, it's okay. Continue to type in there. Just introduce yourself, what your name is, um, what the name of your business is, and where you are located. Um, and before, though, we get started, I do want to introduce Brent. Uh, Brent is one of the coaches on our team. Um, Brent, if you can, wave to everybody and just kind of let them see who you are. Uh, Brent's one of our coaches. He's going to be my co-host. He's going to manage the chat window for me. Um, he's also going to be letting people into the meeting um, because I cannot see you or hear you because I have all of my wonderful full stuff on my screen and I want to be fully engaged. So Brent allows me to do that. Uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end. So if you do have questions, uh, Brent and I will hang around to address those questions at the end. All right, well, let's get started. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Patrice Miles. I'm one of the coaches at My Business on Purpose. Um, I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. That's where I am today. That's why I'm bundled up for those of you that aren't up in the north. It's cold up here right now. Um, I started my career in corporate sales for Bell South Mobility. Um, in 2003, my husband and I decided to get our real estate license. Um, we started Miles Custom Built Homes where he built the houses and I sold them. Um, everything was great until 2008 hit. Um, everyone knows what happened in 2008. The economy tanked and the last house that we had, we could not even auction off. Uh, my husband quickly got out of the custom building business while I decided it was a great idea to help open a Keller Williams Realty brokerage office. Now, while I was there, I drank the Keller Williams Kool-Aid and I hired a real estate coach. Um, this was my first experience with coaching um, and with the disc profiling. Um, we're going to learn about that today, and that's where I first learned about the DISC. Uh, with these two tools, coaching and the DISC, uh, my business skyrocketed. Um, I quickly built the Miles and Smith Real Estate Group with 12 team members. Um, after several years of success selling over 200 homes a year, I went on a missions trip with my local church, and I felt called to missions. And so like crazy people, my husband and I, we sold everything we owned, even our business, and we moved our family to Nigeria to work alongside Samaritan's Purse to rebuild a hospital. So my husband, he ran the construction crews and I ran operations, administration, HR, and all the volunteer travel and accommodations for over 200 volunteers that came to work on the project. Now, during the six years that we spent there, we found a need for education for orphans, and we started a nonprofit called Care Africa. Now, this is where my business on purpose comes in, the company that I coach for. Um, this is where they come into the picture because Scott Beebe, the owner of my business on purpose, and his team, they coached me through the nonprofit world so that Care Africa could run itself one day without me. 
So we currently have a school with 193 children and 34 teachers. Uh, with the Lord's help and the business on purpose tools that I coach on today, Care Africa, it runs itself without me in Nigeria. Now, my family and I have been back in the States for three and a half years now, and my business on purpose has allowed me to continue to be the Lord's hands and feet to business owners through coaching. Um, our mission at My Business on Purpose is to liberate business owners from chaos so that they can make time for what matters most. This is our team. And one of the things that we hear over and over again is that part of that chaos is employees. So we are going to get deep into the personalities of the DISC during this masterclass. Now, there is a reason that we've titled this Stop Gambling with Your Employees. That is because so many of us business owners, we just look to hire and fire based on need or things that are right in front of us, uh, rather than really thinking strategically around the placement of the right people in the right place. We're normally so focused on the chaos in our businesses that we don't think strategically about hiring and retaining the right people. Um, Jim Collins, he said it so well when he said, get the right people on the bus, get the wrong people off the bus, and get the right people in the right seats. So we want to make sure that we don't just get the right people, but we want to get the right people in the right seats so that they can thrive. So let's talk about what the purpose of this masterclass is. Number one, my goal is that in the next 30 to 45 minutes, you are going to learn how to speak to others the way that they need to be spoken to. You know, history is filled with wise teachings about serving others, putting others first, and thinking about the needs of others before yourselves. So it is no different here, this idea, this concept that we need to be seeking to put the needs of others before ourselves. That really is the basis, that is the foundation of the DISC personality profiles. Now, yes, with this tool, you will understand your staff, your coworkers, and yourself better, but the goal is that you use this tool so you can speak to others the way that they need to be spoken to. It doesn't matter if you're speaking to an employee, a client, a coworker, a sales lead over the phone. How about your wife, your husband, or your kids? There is value in understanding someone's personality and then altering your verbiage and your tone so that they can actually understand what you are trying to say to them. By the way, guys, this does work at home. I know the disc test on each one of my kids and I speak to them how they need to be spoken to so that I can get my dishwasher unloaded, so that I can get the trash taken out, so that I can get my bathrooms cleaned. I know if I tell my daughter Jolie to sweep the floors right now, 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 she can't function like that because she is a C. She needs to process and think before she can do something. If I tell her to sweep my floors by the end of the day, well, then all the anxiousness is gone and she knows she has the entire day to process it and fit it into her schedule. I speak to her the way that she needs to be spoken to. The second purpose for this masterclass is that we want each person to carry out their unique capability within the business. So what are your unique capabilities? Well, it is the essence of what you love to do and do best. It is your own set of natural talents and passion that fuels you to contribute in the ways that most motivate you. When articulated, it describes the you that makes you who you are. The DISC personality and understanding it will allow you to give some objective measures to ensure you, your staff, and your coworkers can carry out their unique capability within the body and the scope of your business. The third purpose is a little bit more metaphorical. When a plane gets ready for takeoff, at that moment, we need the wing to act like a wing, the engine to act like the engine, and the rudder to act like the rudder. That really is what this is all about. The purpose is for you as a business owner and or someone on the team where you have to work with others, Everyone needs to understand what place each person needs to be in, the role that they need to be acting in. Are you the engine? Are you the wing? Are you the runner? So let's jump right in and lay out what we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about the background of the disc, 
there is a little history, which is super interesting to me, but might be boring for some of you. Um, number two, we are going to walk through each of the four disc types. Um, number three, we're going to give you some general stats about the personality types and what you should look for. Um, number four, we are also going to look at how to place your employees in the right role, or if you are an employee, how to know if you're in the right role. And then number five, we are going to talk about the way for you to know a person's personality in less than 30 seconds by just simply asking two powerful questions. So let's deep dive into the history of the disc because it did not just start here in the modern day era. It is also not just something that we've made up here at Business on Purpose to put people in a box. Um, it actually started way back with Hippocrates back in 400 BC. This is where you will find the first ever known model of personality profiling. He put out a theory that a person's persona is based on one of four different areas or temperaments. Another Greek physician came along and actually said that there is four different types of body fluids that mirror the four different types of personalities, blood, mucus, black bile, and yellow bile. It's kind of disgusting. I mean, which one would you want to be? Would you rather be blood or mucus? Black bile or yellow bile? I don't think I'd want to be any. Anyway, all of this happened in 400 BC. Some people even say that the ancient Greeks would also call somebody earth, wind, fire, or water. And those four different personality types or those four elements would actually lend to the personality types. So you see, even way back in history, this idea of four personalities existed. So let's fast forward a little to the 1800s of William Wundt. He came up with what we called the humors theory, and he made a pretty clear distinction between this Greek idea of the body fluids acting in relation to the personalities. What Wundt realized was that the temperaments went way beyond just some kind of body fluid idea. So what he came up with is what many of you guys know today as the sanguine, the phlegmatic, the choleric, and the melancholy personalities. So again, we're going to fast forward a little to the 1800s, and you've got Sigmund Freud, who came up with the structural model of the mind, the id, ego, superego. And then you have Myers-Briggs, this mother-daughter combination. Myers and Briggs actually developed this idea of personalities and temperaments in the early 1900s. They did a lot of research and they came up with their own instrument that you may have called or even taken before called the Myers-Briggs test. Around that same time, there was another guy by the name of William Marston. He had a PhD from Harvard and he came out with a book called The Emotions of Normal People. He had a theory of how the normal emotions of human beings lead to differences in behavior among different groups of people. He also begins to diagnose how those behaviors change over time. His wife actually told him, you know what? When I get angry, my blood pressure rises. So Marston, being pretty smart and a guy with a PhD who studied psychology, came back with a way that you can determine if somebody is lying by their systolic blood pressure. He came out with a systolic blood pressure test, which then laid the foundation for the invention of the polygraph test. But within that, he also started to label the personalities of what we know today as the DISC. D for dominance, I for influence, S for submissive, and C for compliant. Now, on a funny side note, William Wundt not only came up with the polygraph test to help us understand whether somebody was telling a truth or a lie, but even more importantly, he is in the comic book hall of fame for inventing and creating the comic book character Wonder Woman. So if you guys remember, Wonder Woman actually convinced people to tell truth with her lasso. So history lesson over. I hope you guys didn't get too bored. The gist is, is that this is not made up, guys. This isn't mumbo jumbo. There is actually science and a lot of psychology that has gone into this tool. So now the question is, what does the disc actually look like and how does it play itself out? Well, here is the four personality profile grid. D is for dominant personality. I is for influence. S is for submissive, and C is for compliant. So let's start with the dominant personality. What is that personality like? 
What does that personality bring to the team environment? Well, the beauty of a D is they really do think about big picture and goals. They like to fly really high over the business and look at the broader picture at 60,000, 70,000 feet. They are a bottom line person. You bring the situation to them and they just want to get to the bottom line of it. And then guess what? They want to move on to the next thing. They are constantly moving forward. That's what D's love to do. They always like to challenge the status quo. They like to look at a situation and say, hey, we can beat that or we can do better. And then they accomplish that and they are looking for the next challenge. They are natural born leaders and they will take control easily. Now, some of the weaknesses of the D personality are a lot of times they like to overstep authority. They prefer to be in charge, so they tend to overstep their bounds sometimes, and a lot of times they're not very self-aware about it. They do get a lot of stuff done, but that sometimes can allow them to prefer quantity over quality. These don't like repetition. They don't like doing the same thing over and over and over again. They always want to find new stuff, and they can sometimes move on to new ventures before perfecting the one that they have. They can be a bull in a china shop and they really struggle with reflecting on achievements and celebrating themselves because they are always moving to the next thing. Now, the greatest fear of a D is they don't like being taken advantage of and they don't like their time being wasted. Frankly, at the end of the day, they want to be in control. If they feel like they are being taken advantage of or their time is being wasted, then they are not in control and they do not like that. So what motivates a D? Well, they love new challenges and achieving all sorts of different things, whether they're written goals or awards. They do need a little pat on the back every now and then, but just a little. Ds don't want to be a receiver of smoke blowing, so don't blow smoke. They do want to receive some recognition for their efforts from the right people, but ultimately just give them some authority, give them some power, give them opportunities to grow and be challenged and keep them moving. So what about the eye? An eye loves to be the center of attention. There is not a party that an eye has seen that they don't love. The eye wants to know where the party is and where is the table in the center of the party so that I can get on top of the table and be the life of the party. They are talkative and they tell stories. In fact, that's one of the hallmarks of an eye. They usually say, let me tell you a story. And they love to talk in metaphors. They love being around other people. People energize them and everyone should be their best friend. So what do eyes bring to the team? They bring an incredible amount of inspiration and motivation to a team because eyes have natural energy. They do not like being put in a box because they are different. They are special. They are always wanting to think outside of the box. They just want to show up to work and everybody have a good time. So what are some of the weaknesses? Well, they don't like conflict. They will shy away from any intense conversation. This is important when you're working with an I. A D will take conflict all day long. They don't mind it. In fact, conflict is how business gets done, but not for the I. They will avoid it at all costs and will be the first to ghost you. Some of the challenges with an I is they are normally not organized or detail-oriented. They're not really into that because for them to have a party, you don't need to be organized. Just show up and have fun. Another weakness is that they can talk too much, making it very, very annoying for D's and C personalities who just want them to get to the point. They like to use their hands a lot, facial expressions, impulses, voice inflections, and it sometimes tends to drive people crazy. They can also tend to lie or over-exaggerate and distort the truth just a little because they want to impress you or make the story better so that they can sell you on it. They also tend to be very emotional. The greatest fear of an eye is rejection. Reject them and oh my goodness, that crushes the soul of an eye. If you don't invite them to that party or include them in that social event, you have just rejected them. They normally have serious FOMO, fear of missing out. What motivates an eye is encouragement. Just give them a high five and a pat on the back. Eyes typically don't even mind smoke blowing pats on the back. A simple, hey, good game today, guys. Good job. Great project. 
that's usually enough for an eye to get a little shot of energy and a little motivation to keep them going. Keep them around people and never put them in a cubicle without human contact. As long as they have people to talk to and a pat on the back now and then, they will thrive. All right, what about our S's, our submissive steady personalities? So this is the most dominant personality in the world. There are more S's running around the world than any other personality. They are steady because they are predictable. We like to have steady personalities because we know what we will get. They're also very sentimental. They love to hang out with people, not at the center of attention like an eye, but just the quality time with other people. The eye is normally in the coffee room surrounded about everyone, telling them all the amazing things that they did last weekend, while the S is off to the side, chatting with you, asking you, what did you do this weekend? And truly relishing everything that you were telling them. They listen very, very well. So what do S's contribute to the team environment? Well, they're incredibly patient and kind. You can take an idea to an S, and an S will be very patient and long-suffering to hear that idea through. They are also very loyal. Now, some of the weaknesses are that they can easily be taken advantage of. See, they like the routine, and they like things that are very predictable, and they're very patient with those things. But at the same time, the Ds and the Is can particularly take advantage of the S personality. So we have to be really careful around our Ss so that we do not exasperate them. They will want to do anything we ask because they want to see us happy, and they will overload and overcommit themselves. Like the eyes, S's weakness is also conflict. They avoid conflict at all costs because it truly hurts their heart. They are peacemakers and they are gonna do whatever it takes to keep the peace, even if that means they have to do more than what their job role states. Now, what is the greatest fear of an S? Well, they like to be in a peaceful situation. So if there's a loss of security, the S is out. How do they feel the loss of security? by being thrown into a job role or a team that is dysfunctional. They are not interested in that. And so we have got to be careful and motivate our S's through systems and processes. They need things that are predictable so that they can show up every single day and feel secure in knowing what they are supposed to do and how to do it. They like mundane activity and routine as long as there is a discussion and a relationship along with it. All right, so what about those C's, the compliant personality? They love details, whereas the D's and the I's, they shy away from details. The C's go looking for details. They've got incredibly high standards, not only for themselves, but also for everyone else. They'll see things that most other people won't. These folks are great problem solvers because they dig down deep a lot of times. You want these folks as your financial people. My husband is a high C. This is the hat that my daughter bought him for Christmas. It says, I am not a control freak, but you are doing it wrong. <laughs> so what do C's bring to the team? Well, when something is put on the table, the C will think it through thoroughly and walk through the details step by step. They are your researchers. If you've got a project coming up, pass it along to your C, but make sure, guys, that it comes with plenty of instructions. The Cs have to have instructions before they move to the next step. They are also rule followers and very detail-oriented. Weaknesses of the C is that they will avoid conflict and suppress their feelings to the point that they may blow up months after an event. The Cs can be a little indecisive because they want to find all the latest research first before making a decision. They can get bogged down in the details too much and never make a decision because they still have more questions or more research to do. They can be known to be a perfectionist and also not too good with people. Now, C's greatest fear is criticism. If you want to crush a C, criticize their work and point out the flaws and mistakes. You have got to be very careful of how you tell a C that something is wrong with what they did. So what motivates a C? Well, it's simple. 
They've got high standards. So give them clear parameters to measure themselves with. Give them instructions, processes, and systems so that they can check the boxes and do the task well and have a standard to measure themselves against. They are great process implementers. So those are your four major personality styles. So some interesting stats about these profiles. Did you know that 3% of the world is populated by Ds? Only 3% is Ds. For me, being a D, I say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Did you know that 11% of the world's population are Is? Cs, there's only 17% of Cs. And if you do good math, you would know what's left. And that leaves 69% of the world's population are stable, predictable, patient, routine, friendly people who love spending quality time with you and are a little bit sen sentimental. So that's kind of what we need in the world right now, right? Well, we still do need Ds, Is, and Cs at the same time to come along and perform their function. But when you have a D who is constantly pushing, 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 and constantly moving forward, going on to the next thing, that's where you really need that C to bring balance to the D with a reality check through research and questions, or that I to encourage you, or that S to ask how the team will feel about this new idea. What about when you have an I constantly telling stories and metaphors in the center of the party and just making quick and flighty decisions? That's where you need the C to come back in and to offer reason, insight, and research to really solve the problem, and the D to hold them accountable to progress, and the S to make sure that they are looking at the other team members and not just at themselves. You see, everyone has a different personality that brings different giftings to the table. If we know each person's personality, then we know what they can bring to the team. So how about a team meeting? Who should lead a team meeting? Think about it, who should lead a team meeting? Can an S lead a team meeting? Of course they can, but be prepared to go down every rabbit hole because they will let everyone talk about everything they want to in the meeting. Remember, they're peacemakers. They just want peace and everyone to feel heard. The meeting will probably last about three hours, but guess what? If you are an S and you struggle in this area, just ask a C to help keep you to the agenda. And then guess what? Your team meeting will be beautiful. What about the C? Can they lead a team meeting? Well, of course they can. And you better believe they are gonna stick to that agenda they're probably gonna get bogged down with the details of the agenda. And they will need to process everything everyone says and write down their thoughts before moving to the next item. The meeting will probably be a little shorter than the S's meeting, maybe only like two hours. But guess what? If you are a C and you know this is your weakness, then ask the D to help keep moving you forward in the meeting. And then guess what? Your team meeting will be beautiful. Can the D lead a team meeting? Well, of course they can, they're natural born leaders, but guess what? They're gonna need the S or the I to remind them to slow down so people can talk about stuff. Otherwise, the meeting is gonna last like 15 minutes and when everyone leaves, they're gonna feel like they just got hit by a freight train. What about an I? Can they lead a team meeting? Of course, they will lead it amazingly. But again, they're gonna need someone to help them create an agenda and help them stick to it. Otherwise, the meeting will feel like a bouncy ball, bouncing off the wall from one thing to the next and nothing ever sticking. So let me ask you again, who can lead a team meeting? Anyone can. When you know your gifts and weaknesses, the self-awareness should help you work on what you need in order to lead a team meeting effectively. So who should take notes in a team meeting? This one's a little easier. The D will only have four bullet points of the most important things to them. The I will have nothing written down at all because they were too busy take, taking or talking and dreaming. So really, you should probably ask a C or an S to take notes if you want all the actual details from the meeting. So that actually leads us to a different side of the graph. 
So this side of the graph is known as active. It's the active side of the graph. So you see the D's and I's, they are active. On the other side of the graph, you see passive. On this side of the graph, you see the C's and the S's. They are known as passive personalities. Now, that doesn't mean that action is right and passive is wrong. Not at all. In fact, just the opposite. Both are equally good when they're held in check with their own unique personalities. Another thing that you need to notice is that the upper part of the graph, which is where the D's and C's are, are going to be task first. They are all about the task. The lower part is going to be people first, all about people connection, hanging out. So the S's and the I's are the people over tasks, and the C's and D's are task over people. So if you've got somebody who is a C dominant trait, they are going to be all task oriented and not people oriented. So why do we get upset and frustrated when they seem to quote, don't care about us? Well, guess what? They're not really wired that way. They're wired to think about tasks first and people second. What about someone who is predominantly an I? Every time we see them, they're talking on the phone or they're talking to someone in the office and we get frustrated wondering, do they ever get anything done? Well, it's because they are people first and task second. That conversation on the phone or that conversation with that coworker was much more important than the task that you had assigned them. So the uniqueness of understanding the disc is not identifying what quadrant someone is in and then forcing them to become something they are not so that they can do what you want them to do. You cannot get a high eye personality to stop talking and sit at a computer all day and make pie charts. Can they do it? Well, yeah, they can, but they would hate their job and everyone would know it. The goal of this tool, the DISC, is to take somebody who is an I and put them in the right seat on the bus. So here are some very general statements that don't apply to everyone, but typically your eyes are going to be your salespeople, your inspirational speakers. They are going to sit in any seat on the bus that allows them to talk to people, influence people, and make friends with people. Your business owners and project managers are typically, but again, not always, in this quadrant here. Your Ds, they're always moving forward, big vision, overseeing things, whether it's a project or the company. Now, your doers, your people behind the scenes, your workers in a business are typically going to be in the areas of the C's and the S's. Your accountants, your teachers, your architects and receptionists, these folks get things done from a process standpoint behind the scenes. Again, guys, these are general statements, but ultimately, who do you want as a receptionist? Somebody who is going to be able to do something very repetitive all day long and have a smile on their face, an S. So who do you want as a research analysis? Well, somebody who needs to be able to do something very repetitive with a passive personality and has high standards, a C. So who do you want to own a business with? Someone who is constantly pushing the ball forward quickly and pivoting to be successful, and that is your D personality. So that's how you begin to place people within the organization. Find out what personality type they predominantly are, and then identify the job role that best fits that personality profile. Ask yourself, does this job role require an active personality or a passive personality? Is it a task role? or is it a people role? Then you will be able to determine exactly what personality you want for a role. Once you have that personality laid out for a role, then you'll be able to marry a person, a unique person to that role so that they can thrive. So the last thing that we have to go over is the final two questions that you can begin to ask to diagnose a person's personality with literally 30 seconds. So the first question is, do they ask or do they tell? Are they asking me questions or are they telling me facts, stories, and what to do? The second question is, are they control or are they show? 
Are they under control? Not a lot of movement, straightforward, matter of fact. Or are they showing me emotion, using hand gestures and voice inflections to show me things and tell me things? So if someone is always asking questions and demonstrating control and is task oriented, then guess what? They are probably a C. If they are exhibiting control, telling me facts, how to do things and what to do and when to do it, tasks over people, then they are probably a D. If someone is asking questions, how are you doing? How was your weekend? And showing kindness and are people focused, they're typically going to be an S. If someone is much more demonstrative and shows it, but they're telling you about the weekend and everything they did, that's going to be your I. So guys, there you go. There is just some brief training for the DISC personality profile. And I say brief because there is so much more to the DISC. We just scratched the surface today. Once you take the DISC test, you will find out that we all have four of the personality profiles in us. Some are above the line and some are below the line. For instance, me, I am a DCIS. My D is my primary, and then my C is very close. My I is above the line, thank goodness, but my S is below the line. This means I can lead, I think big vision, but I'm also detail-oriented, and I need time to process and ask questions. I do have some I, but not much, which allows me to do this webinar. And of course, and I enjoy having one-on-one -on -one coffees or lunches with people, but I am never going to enjoy a large social event. I am never gonna be the life of the party. And then with my S below the line, guys, you better watch out because empathy, patience, kindness, they're all a big struggle for me that I work with on daily. So you see, there is more to the disc that we can't cover today. So I am actually going to offer some coaching time with three DISC assessment tests for anyone on the call that is not currently in coaching. Um, if you want to dive deeper into how your business and your team can function better, then I do have three spots available for business owners and or key leaders in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session for you. Um, I will give you the details about that in just a minute, but I do want to speak to everyone that's on this call that is currently a business on purpose uh, or is in the business on purpose coaching model, um, you guys all have access to the DISC personality profile too through your coach. So just shoot your coach a text or an email and they will get you set up with a test for you and your key leaders. And they of course will walk you through the more intense DISC training. Uh, we also offer DISC workshops via Zoom and also on site DISC training. So just make sure to ask your coach about that and they can talk to you about that more. But for those of you that are not currently in coaching and you are serious about wanting your business and team to function better, um, you can scan this QR our code. Um, just so you know, our one-on-one -on -one coaching starts at $2,000 a month, but I have created some room in my schedule for three business owners or key leaders uh, for a just a one-time call, and it's $497. So you will receive disc tests for you and two of your key leaders on our call. Um, we can either spend time deciphering those disc tests or really just discussing anything you'd like to about your business. So either scan the code or visit this website and you can sign up on my calendar for that one-time coaching call. Guys, I hope you found this incredibly helpful today. I do want to remind you all, train your team on this. Embed this stuff into your weekly schedule, into your weekly team meetings. Talk about them for about three to five minutes and put it on your team meeting agenda. DISC personality training, put it on your agenda. And what I want you to do is ask your team, Ask them, over the last week, where did we come in contact with a D personality and how did we respond? Where did we come in contact with an S personality and how did we respond? What did we do right? How could we have done it better? Talk about this for only three to five minutes a week and I guarantee it will be a game changer for your business in terms of people understanding each other and really beginning to appreciate how each person works within the business and outside of the business. Your team will grow closer, your client experience will get better, and everyone will thrive in their role. All right, guys, class is dismissed. Brent and I will hang out for some questions. 
So if anyone has any questions, definitely feel free to stay on and unmute yourself and start talking. I hear somebody. Who's that? Hey, Mark. Hey, Rick. Hey oh, there. Oh. Can you hear All right. Me? Does anybody have any questions? I hear somebody. You've got better ears than me. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got better ears than me. I can't hear anyone. Sounds good. Any questions in the chat window that I need to address, Brent? Um, no questions. Uh, can, can we get a, a copy of this recording of this Zoom yes. call? Yeah. Um, Jesse, are you still on the call? Yep. I'll be sending everybody a recording of it. There you go. Jesse's going to be sending a recording. How, how hey, do you everyone. suggest if, if we have all of our team members take a disc? Do you share it with everybody? How do you suggest um, reviewing it? Yeah, that, I, I definitely. Or is that? I definitely one? think that you should share it with your team. I mean, that's one of the advantages of being able to understand okay. each person's personality so everybody can relate really well together. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, this is Shade Lowry from Dallas, Texas. I just hired, I'm a D and I just hired an I. But oh. I'm going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could keep her for much longer because I'm going to kill myself. So <laughs> do you think a D with a D assistant? Because how do you handle, I mean, what would be, um, what would be the best fit for a D as an assistant? Yeah. And, you know, I wish I could answer that directly, but it really is going to be so much based on you and what your actual needs for that role is, because what an assistant means to you could mean something completely different to someone else. So it really would depend on what that job role is. Um, if it has a lot of details and it requires somebody to be very detail oriented and keep notes and be organized, well, then you need a C. Um, but if it's someone that's picking up the phone and making phone calls for you and talking to clients and has client engagement, uh, you're going to need somebody with some eye for that. So it just really depends on the role. Okay, so not everybody, no, that's that's a great answer. Not everybody's a 100% CID, right? Correct. So, and just, um, just like I said myself, I'm a DCIS, so... Got it. Uh, so what, if, if I'm expect, my expectations are for, for her to work quicker because she's very slow right now and she likes to socialize a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> what, do I need to look for somebody that is more, you know, like a D and there's not that much detail, but it's quickness. Yeah. Again, it really goes back to that job role, um, you know, because Plenty of us can be quick in things, but still not be great in some other areas. Um, so again, you would just really need to identify that job role um, because, you know, I think Brent, you can speak to this. Brent, you're an ID. I am. Yeah. And Brent, I mean, you're pretty quick on things and he's, mm -hmm. and he's an ID, but he's also very much that sanguine. He can talk, he can engage you, but then he can also turn on that D real quick and nip it in the bud. Okay, because we don't hire until they do the disc. I Good mean, for you. Yeah. Good for, for you. Sure. But what, I guess what was their what was their total profile? Um, now that I'm listening to you guys, I can't remember, but obviously from her personality and the way she's worked, she's worked for me now for about a couple of months. I'm like, okay, maybe this wasn't the best hire for that position. <laughs> but now I'm gonna look a little bit more deeper. Um but yes, doesn't like conflict, life of the party, socializer, everything you said is so true. And I'm like, I would say probably about 90% D and maybe 10% C and she's all I. <laughs> so yeah. yes, it's, it's becoming, you're so right. It's becoming a little problematic. So I think yeah. I need to look at, yeah, your matrix a little bit harder next time. 
Yeah. And ultimately, if an I was your goal, but you just wanted an I with some details, you would just need to, of course, when you do that disc test, make sure that their their D or their C is above the line. Make sure it's not below the line. <laughs> okay. Got it. Thank you so much. This was so helpful. You're welcome. What was your name again? Shade Lowry. Shade Lowry. Yeah, we're a high-end custom home builder. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good luck yeah, with lo that. Love this. Love this. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, and keep in mind, if you'd like to set up a time to talk, you can scan that QR code and we'll be happy to talk in more detail. I will. Thank you. Anyone else? Great questions. Hey, I have a question. Yes. I heard Hi, Mark Mom. first. Uh, Kenneth can go. Oh, let's see. There we go. Kenneth? Hi, Mom. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, so I have a question. Yes, Kenneth. Is this Kenneth from Nigeria? Yes, yeah, it's Kenneth from Nigeria. Hello, Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. You so, too. Go okay. ahead. So I have a question. I discovered that reading this, I was looking at your G attribute and I was like, gosh, this is me on paper. And I'm like, that would be true. <laughs> I just thinking out loud, I'm a total D. I have a boss who is a C. Okay. How do I deal with him? We don't go well together at all. How so do I you, do you are the C and your boss is the D. No, I am the D and my okay. boss is the C. Okay, and so your boss is highly organized. Is it hard sometimes for him to kind of move forward and make decisions? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, and this, you just, you just always... want to move forward. Quick, quick, go, go. I'm tired of... I'm tired of being tied down to one thing, one thing, one thing. I just want to go on. We're done with this. Let's go. And there's always this sense of um, um, suppressing power, writing authority. Yeah. I, I see that a lot. And I think yeah. I'm, I'm trying hard. How do I deal with that? Well, considering that he's your boss, um, you know, one thing is, is you are going to have to have some patience <laughs> uh, for the fact that he is probably slower than you would like as far as making decisions. But I would just encourage you to have, you know, a sit down, honest conversation um, and just to find out, you know, what you need to be able to move forward with whatever project or whatever's going on that you're wanting to move forward with. That means I sit with him to talk. Yes, or... that means you sit with him to talk with. I know in Nigeria is not protocol, <laughs> <laughs> well, but you can manage. And uh, Kenneth, it's definitely something we can chat about too offline. It's all right. Thank you. Hey, Mark, did you have a question? Um, I guess more just a comment. Um, and I, you know, you you know from uh, coaching me that uh, I've used the disc profile before, so. In a previous career uh, with a production home builder, um, we used the DISC profile a lot. It was right when you hired, you, you took the test, um, yeah. we figured out people's letters, and we trained on it internally very often, not only to work within our teams, we had our construction teams and our sales teams and our design teams, um, but we wanted to use it uh, as we handed off our customers between the teams. So, you know, you get a, a home buyer come in talking to a sales agent, they would transfer to the design person, they would transfer then to construction team. So we would have our internal meetings at that handoff and say, oh, the husband is a high C, make sure you talk about the floor joists and the dimensions yes. in the kitchen. And, um, you know, the wife's a high I, so pop some jokes in once in a while. So it really helped internally, um, you know, talk about our customers and then create a good experience for them. Because uh, yes. we knew how to, to tailor our approach, whether we were talking about designing their kitchen or when we had them in the field and trying to show them around a house. And um, so, yeah, it works internally and from the customer service aspect. Yeah. You, you're speaking my love language, Mark. It is so true. Even in my sales with real estate, it will change the client experience. If you can train your team on the DISC model, it will change the client experience because if they can quickly identify the client and what their needs are, um, just like you said, you know, if you know the husband's a high C, you better get very specific with those floor plans. Don't just show the floor plans and go, aren't these beautiful? Now, if the wife is an I, 
yes, you still have to speak her love language too. You know, she needs to know, you know, all of how beautiful it's going to be and how when everyone comes, what they're going to see and, you know, how she's going to look so good to everyone. Uh, but the husbands definitely want to know, you know, how far is this stud from that stud? You know, how many nails are you going to use? <laughs> so and you better uh, be prepared for both, but that's great, Mark. It's a great example. And, and just for the room, I'm a very high C and no, I, not you, not at all. C and an I. So uh, <laughs> you could see my uh, my my Google Drive and just it's flooded with documents and graphs and charts. And Mark has one of the best <laughs> master process roadmaps that I've seen. <laughs> all right. Who's got another question? These are great. No one else. Well, guys, um, Jesse will be sending out the webinar for you guys or the masterclass for you guys to rewatch. Highly encourage you to share that with your team, uh, show it at your next team meeting. Um, and then, of course, engage us here at My Business on Purpose if you need some more instruction or would like a workshop or any additional training. All right. You guys enjoy the rest of your week.